This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about The Virgin Spring from 1960, directed by Ingmar Bergman. Who? Pervman. So, yeah. a synopsis for this mm-hmm. film, RJ. Devout Christians, Tor and Moretta, send their only daughter, the virginal Karen, and their foster daughter, the unrepentant Ingeri, to deliver candles to a distant church. Yeah. On their way through the woods, the girls encounter a group of savage goat herders who brutally rape and murder Karen as Ingeri remains hidden. When the killers unwittingly seek refuge in the farmhouse of Tor and Moretta, Tor plots a fitting revenge. Is that what happens in this movie? Kinda. Kinda? Kinda, okay. kinda. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is a rewatch for me. I've seen this movie before, and... Mm-hmm. I th- I'm trying to remember the context of why I sought this out specifically. And I think it was actually because it was on cartoonist Johnny Ryan's top 46 horror films that he uh, did informally on Facebook back in like yeah. like 2010 or something like that. And you went Bergman horror. He said, I got to check this out. Right, and because like I had heard of the Virgin Spring in passing, and the only reason I'd ever heard of it, I think, was because it would be mentioned when you read about a little movie called Last House on the Left, because there's always this idea: it's like, mm-hmm. well, Wes Craven, an intellectual, uh, mm-hmm. he he knew good movies, and he he studied Bergman, and of sure. course he looked he wa- he would have watched the Virgin Spring. Um, when it was probably being screened in America to American audiences, and he went, I could do that. Uh, he went, he went, hey, people don't know, I uh, people don't know Icelandic filmmaker Ingmar Bergman. Oh, I, I, I don't think he would be intentionally uh trying to disguise it, but he's like the story. It's so. It's, it's so visceral. It needs to be retold. It needs to be retold. So, that's how my initial memory of Virgin Spring would have originated. Well, then, of course, mm. when I saw it in this list, and it's like, what's this Virgin Spring about? It's a it's a rape revenge movie. Ingmar Bergman, the man who brought us the Seventh Seal, he's mm. he's mm-hmm. dallying in this kind of filth, this sort of base storytelling. Allegedly. No, allegedly. Um, so I watched it, you know, many years ago, and my memory of it was very positive and me thinking it's one of the, the best of Bergman for sure. a couple of reasons. I remember being a great looking movie, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like it's very simple maybe, but it is also, uh, it, fe- it feels complex uh, in its simplicity because it's it's very kind of vague and in, in terms of like filling in the gaps of like what's it saying here well, there's like a, like I don't know if you call it magic realism or like weird spiritual like Warfare? miracle things going on but mm-hmm. like but it's the same thing like well yeah this is the guy who did seven seal this is a movie about like a, a knight playing chess with death this is a guy who who uh isn't afraid to mingle <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. With with like forces of the universe and them interacting with people, and we get like a little bit of that, but we also have just like grim reality come down and just mm-hmm. like brutalize uh, an innocent person, and yeah, and it's just kind of like damn, there's there's no coming back from that. What were I'm I'm curious here because I didn't I didn't really catch it. What were the parts of uh, this magical realism you're talking about in this one? I... Two. Two bits. Two. Okay, because we'll, we'll, I didn't we'll, get any of that. We'll, we'll keep track of. We'll keep track of them. Uh, we'll go okay. through this. We'll go through the story though. Okay. 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 It's pretty well the, uh, not quite the middle and the very end. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the movie opens up with the uh, the the foster daughter, the unrepentant in Gary, uh, yes. as the synopsis puts it, and she is lighting a fire, a fire that will become important. Uh, as the, as the as the movie reaches its conclusion, um, and she's just looking at it very intently. She's basically probably one of the first people up in the 
they call it like a f- the farm. What do they call it? A farmhouse. It's like kind of just like this mm. homestead. Uh, it's it, something it, like that. It feels yeah. like it kind of feels fortressy. Like it's not, but like, it's yeah, like it's, it's out it's in the like middle of nowhere. It's you gotta you have to have wall. You gotta have walls, RJ. You gotta have yeah. walls. You, you, you gotta you gotta keep bad people out, RJ. Oh, I'm aware. There's yeah. some bad dudes out there, dude. Yeah. Well, when you're when you're out in the woods, uh, uh, you never know when goat uh, herds will show up and others. Mm. You gotta watch out for those guys. Um, so we have uh, a a woman, this young woman, um, who has like just like thick, dark hair, looks like a little wild, and it's like super simple like makeup that's very effective. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, she reads that way, but it's like kind of this idea that's like, oh, she's like all scaff, scruffy and scampy and stuff like that. Even though it's like, you clearly thought it's like this person's gorgeous, <laughs> like under this makeup, it's like yeah, yeah. But she, um, and then she's like, well, she's pregnant because she, and she's moving around. I don't know. I mean, I doubt that the uh, actor was pregnant. Uh, she's probably wearing uh, some padding, a suit on her, and moving about and struggling. And then she kind of like has this moment where she's like looking around and then she kind of goes toward this giant um, log that kind of holds up the vent that lets the smoke from the fire leave the mm-hmm. building. And she starts praying to Odin. She, 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 she does pray to Odin. She's calling, a couple to, times. She's calling to Odin. Odin, come mm-hmm. to, to, to set her free. Do you think that Odin would? C- come? Yeah, do you think he'd come and help out, or we'll find out? We'll find mm. out. Um, so yeah, these are like it's just kind of like stuff, like minor little details, especially when you go back through a movie, maybe for some screenshots after the fact. You go, oh mm-hmm. yeah, they're, they're setting up this whole room real early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, that's that's nice. That's uh, that's good it's stuff you don't pick up on the first time through, or even like you know, ten mm. years between your first and second viewing. But when you kind of go back through for those screenshots, as mm. all movies should be viewed via screenshot. Just for screenshot? For the memes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, I agree. For, for, for how'd, you give, how'd you get screenshots of this, though? Because it's a, I watched it on the Criterion channel, um, and they have screenshotting disabled. I watched it on my – I was watching it on our browser, Chrome. And then I just command shift three, buddy. And it's and, uh, and, I got, and I got nice crisp shots. Well, you might have to be doing the screenshot for a while because every time I try to screenshot, I just get it, get, it goes full black when I try to print screen. What was my, that? Command shift three? Is that what well, you said? I'm, but I'm on a, I'm on a uh, MacBook, my friend. Uh, so yeah, I just have a print th- th- screen. This is what, this is what people tune in for. This is why our YouTube uh, is sailing. Wow. <laughs> Millions of viewers. Yeah. We're doing good. We're doing good. Um, we're introduced to mom and pa. Mm hmm. Uh, they're God-fearing folk. We see them praying uh, first thing, getting ready for the day. The mom is a little bit more hardcore. She's like, yes. time to pour the hot burning candle wax on my wrist. Uh, for, for, for fun? To, for solidarity with Jesus and his suffering. Oh, yeah. I get it. I and he, get it. and Pa tries to stop. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? And she's like, oh, let me. Let so me you, you got to take your penance a little, little softer. Yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself. Exactly. Um. And then we're introduced to we sort of like it's just like a rolling out of like kind of some of the characters. There's this older servant woman who it's like I think she just I don't think there's any relationship between her it or and Gary. But it, I mean, for all we know, it could be her mother. <laughs> but but I think it's just like I think they describe her as a foster daughter. So she just lives with this family and they've kind of taken her in. But now that she finds herself in the situation being pregnant there's mm-hmm. a lot of like constant like beratement from this older servant who's just like well look at you the way you carry on you got yourself into this and then even um when uh moretta she's just like we should have, we should have kicked you out immediately as soon as, soon uh, as you did this so it's like she's almost like yeah a, she's like this foster daughter who they're just like constantly shaming for being a little yeah, too I wild mean, that is... she's not god fearing enough well yeah that is like step kid thing, right? It's just like fuck. You're just not fitting it, fitting in here. Yeah, you just don't respect God enough. And then they get her with uh, one of those Texas rattlesnakes, mm-hmm. Texas heard, sharpshooters. Yeah, you know that one, Drew? I've, I've heard a lot about that. Yeah, uh, but the older servant woman also mentions that uh, she's talking to the, the little chick, the little chickadee. 
and just mm-hmm. like uh, talking about, oh, you're living out your miserable little life. <laughs> Wretched. Wretched something life. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's some, so yeah, in, in Gary's like kind of at work, uh, one of those things is like, you know, you get the milk, you get that, uh, that bovine pus and you got to strain it through some, uh, some herbs. That is, that is the way to do it, Jared. Yep. That and, is the way to do then, it. And then you get some communal milk dipping. Uh, well, what have you, what do you dunk your bread in? <laughs> uh, not, not milk. But if you were to dunk, when you're having dinner with like the family, like say this Christmas, maybe um, only your close contacts, obviously. But say mm-hmm. you guys were having a a bowl of something, like so let's say buffalo chicken dip. Would you guys all dunk in in that? Buffalo chicken dip. You ever had one of those? It's good. It's like you take cream cheese with like chicken. You put some buffalo sauce on there. What's your favorite dip? Bean dip? You bean dip guy? No. Um. Do you dip anything? Are you not a dip guy? I like I like my own little um, Philadelphia like dill pickle dip. Dip for, for your for, okay for my chips. Well, you got to remember this is eight thousand years ago where they were when they did they still had the dill pickle dip, but they didn't have enough for individualized one. They had to share, is what I'm saying. Is they had to share more more like eight hundred. Well, no, it's eight thousand. I checked. Okay, <laughs> I asked him. I see. I, I called him. I was like, "Yo, perv." When did this movie take place? So it should, it should be noted that uh, Christianity in these parts of this movie uh, had only been around for like two hundred years. Uh, at the time, at the time. So there's a little bit of uh, you know, that that paganism that call into Odin, it's still it's still percolating under the surface. Uh, but does it? But yeah. at, any, at any point though, is the, isn't the struggle always real? Which struggle is that, Jared? Of oh, the the subjugation of Christianity. On, on true human nature. The weight of knowledge. Mm-hmm. The weight of truth. Mm-hmm. The weight of... Decep- deception. Salvation, <laughs> perhaps, do you know that? Yeah. Well, you know, the the pagans, that's the deception, but uh, <laughs> salvation is at hand. Indeed, indeed. If you embrace it. If you embrace well, it. Well, these, this seems like, uh, and this, this dip in, I think uh, mm-hmm. the one guy, he just like sticks his hand right in and just like with a little bit, a little slurp. It's like, yeah. Oh. And this is not. This is only the beginning of uh, some questionable uh, eating habits. Uh, yeah. There's a some kid pukes in a bowl at one point. Well, that was also he kind of like slaps it. He kind of like it yeah. bends it flying. And then there's like some like oh we don't have rags in this time, so I'm gonna use my yeah, hands just, to like wipe yeah, it off. The, oh, well, no. you can't waste that food. They're starving. Well, they weren't like saving it. They're just like wiping it off the table. Oh right. Yeah. It's not I can then it's like, oh dear. Oh boy. Um so anyway, so so dad, um uh, Max von Sydow. Mm-hmm. He's trying to be like the, the hard ass dad because they're all sitting around the dinner table and it's like, Where's uh where's our daughter? Where where's Karen? And uh she's she's sick. She's like she was up late, she was at she was dancing. She's dancing mm-hmm. with the boys. And it's like, Ooh. oh, she's asking for trouble. And he's like, she, why, she needs to do her chores. She needs to take the candles to the church. And she's the only one who can do it because she's a virgin. Because um, the Bible, RJ. It's about the Bible. And uh, uh, so, so yeah. Tor is trying to be like, you know, he's like trying to be that disciplinary. Uh, the, the mom, she's like, she's very dotting. And like she kind of like you know she tries to act. It's kind of weird because like she acts like the go between with the dad, even though clearly the uh, the daughter Karen she she's got dad wrapped around her little finger. Allegedly, it's it's all there. Allegedly, yeah. So uh, mom though she had some premonitions. She had some upsetting dreams mm-hmm. recently, and it's been it's, put, it's putting her off her game. I don't know. Does that does that fi- uh, fit into the Bible, RJ? Uh well yeah people have visions but dreams dreams um yeah I feel, I feel like those are those those old gods those old gods are about, more about those premonitions nah no well so anyway uh they're they're finishing up and uh, and Gary she's sent off to make a grilled cheese sandwich essentially is that what she's making i think so i, I think the frog those, well that, that that winds up becoming a frog sandwich 
with a, yeah. a piece of a big nice big loaf of bread middle torn up and there's like a frog and then the pro- frog the frog alive just kind of placed it between the bread and cl- yeah cl- closed up uh and that's the last we see of the frog for a while for a bit for a it, bit it's like chekhov's frog sandwich is it alive or dead it's, it's a pretty long standing uh literary tradition uh in the theater frog sandwiches yeah chekhov's frog sandwiches yeah, I'm, I understand about frog sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, when's it going to happen? What's, what's that frog doing? Is that frog all right? Um, it's a practical joke. I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm aware. But it was it, it gets taken as a punishment from God. Is what yeah. I, I interpret the little boy thinking. But Yeah, you, you feel the resentment of N'Gary in this whole situation. And the way she gets treated. How everybody loves Karen. Nobody loves N'Gary. She mm-hmm. just kind of casts aside. She's like told, you got to do the errands because, well, Karen can't do anything around this place. That's true. Yeah. She's delicate, Jared. Mm-hmm. She met, and like those guys are like, well, what beautiful skin you have. And says, well, of course, I'm a princess. And they say, what beautiful hands you have. And she says, well, of course, I'm a princess. I have to have beautiful hands. She's a little bit too, um, she sets some stuff up there. Mm-hmm. Where uh, the way she responds, it's like mm, don't 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 play too many cards at once here. Don't talk about how delicate your skin is quite yet. Get to know these guys a little bit first, no. you know. So mom goes to wake her up, and say, "Hey, you got to get mm-hmm. up." She's like, "Oh, I don't want to." It's like, "Well, unless you're sick, oh, I just don't want to." It's like, "Well, that's not good enough. You got to go." Your dad tells you, "It's like, okay, well, I only want to go if I can wear that outfit I want to wear. It's it's very colorfully described here, presented in grayscale." <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yes. But it looks nice and gray. It does. Yeah, it's it's a very very uh well-made period dress, I guess. I'm not sure yeah. how, I'm not sure how accurate it is to the time period, but I'm sure that uh old Ingmar did his research or his costume designers did. It's definitely something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Uh something. but so it is it, yeah, so again, like we have these like interesting relationships with these characters. It's not all just like everyone doesn't get along or everyone just loves each other. It's like clearly and Gary's got like a real grudge, but at the same time, Karen's like, well, you and Gary should come along. She should come to church. Mm-hmm. Like she's like, wants to be her friend. <laughs> like she, she, she yeah. wants, she wants someone to go with and she wants her to come. She hasn't been out for a while. She should come. So mm-hmm. she's looking out for her, even though Gary like totally resents her because of how her place is. And then, um, you have this thing between, uh, the parents. Cause essentially like if you can, transferred the story to maybe like the 1950s if if like contemporary Sweden uh, Mm -hmm. a lot of the same concerns would still be there with Uh, the the parents and their daughter and stuff I mean probably even if you transported it to the 1972 (laughs) or potentially 2000 and um, nine 2009 yeah would be another time exactly yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you know, it, feel, it's, it feels and it seems like it's medieval. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it's like all the concerns are still there. It feels yeah. like it extends beyond that. So mm-hmm. uh, she asks for her to come along. And then, like, you don't realize how claustrophobic you've been feeling this entire time in this homestead until they leave. And there's this, like, ridiculous shot of like the landscape around this farm. It's like beautiful, mm-hmm. like untouched trees. It's like, this looks like a fantasy drawing. It's just like endless mm-hmm. hills. And it's like, wow, this is like amazing. It's just a toss off shot. You never see that ever really again, except for you, ha- you see a hill with a tree, one lone tree standing on this hill. And you see it from a different angle than you do in the more iconic shot with, uh, our, our, our tour, our, uh, Cedo wrestling with that tree. Just a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just what do you think he was trying to achieve there? We'll get there. Oh. We're not there yet. Um, so the girls are on their way and we get to see some horizons. Which kind of horizon? The only kind. For, the, Fordian. Like the horizon? The horizon. God damn, you love damn. to see it. And these are uh some some very legit ones, as we've seen Bergman use before. Who Bergman? Bergman. Yeah, you know, he's in, the, in, in, in that Seventh Seal. You know, you know, dabbled. you know what I'm talking about. I do. Uh, I do. They, these girls come across a uh, an interested farmer. 
He's very uh, he, he's familiar yeah. he's familiar with them. He's chatty. Uh but this also leads to some high emotion between the two like, you know, foster sister and foster sister about the dance and like the I don't know the the hormones of this uh very pregnant young woman and like kind of like being on her own with this family that's not hers where she's kind of set off to the side and treated not a, like not horribly but rude just, just not great dismissively rudely uh but they're yeah. like they're, they're they're like yeah they're they're always like gonna be like well at least we didn't kick you out which is like this form of emotional abuse and yeah. then she sees her how her you know the one person her age it's like she gets everything and she's like fuck you is she like <laughs> fuck you <laughs> yes i'm a bitch <laughs> I don't remember her adding that last part to it. But <laughs> Bergman-esque dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was new to me, but, you know, whatever, whatever. And, and then uh, the, the two begin to reach the forest. And here we get a crow. Does the crow cough, perhaps? It caws. What else does it do? Uh, that, that's about it. But uh, there's, a, there's an old man, RJ, at this river. What's that guy up to? We don't know. What's he doing? This old man with a with one eye, uh, with a with a crow. Ah. Whoa, whoa. He, he, seems, he, he seems he seems a crow short. So he seems, he seems all decrepit. And so and so Gary he suddenly, does show up. Well, and Gary suddenly has this like fear of the woods, and it's like, mm-hmm. no, just go back, just go back to the homestead. I'll finish up and get the candles there. And she's like, no, no, we can't because she she, for she, she wants to stay, and she's just telling. Uh, you know, Karen to go back so she can stay there and yeah. confer with this man because she's got a there's there's a vibe RJ. She a but vibe. but Karen's like no 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 I'm gonna go on and she's like because she's ter she says she's terrified of the woods but she hangs out because there's something happened here because this guy this guy he's got a real Odin type vibe. I mean, to be frank, he sounds a little bit more like. Anubis? Anub- Anubis? Anubis? You know about Anubis? So we have a scene where yeah. she kind of goes into this cabin and there's a dialogue about like how he can hear things from around the world and like la- la- large cracks from other places and how uh, mm-hmm. things have diminished over time. But he's also a randy, perverted old man who <laughs> wants to feel up this young pregnant woman. Uh, he was which, definitely which, Randy. Which, which sends her flying running away and yeah. he's inside and then she goes running and impossibly he just appears out of nowhere right by her where she is unable to uh, untie her horse. Why do you think he did that? I don't know. Cause he's got powers. Powers. That, that's number one, RJ. It's the first one. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. the first okay. one. Um, okay. So yeah. So, so she kind of like is spooked out by this um, incident. She got the spook spit. Yeah, eh? I mean, it's like, is it who, is is it who she thought it was? Is it just some old hermit or horny hermit? Well, my favorite band, horny hermit, <laughs> horny's hermits, horny's hermits. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah no, that might be. It could have been. It could have been. Um, I made another note here. Some very fine horizons in this motion picture. There was definitely horizons. But here we have the introduction of the goat herding rapist brothers, which is yeah. also also my favorite video game. I think they were called the Dunk the Dunk Boys. Mm-hmm. Not for dunking on things. But, I, I um, actually believe uh I think Duncan in some language historically is like a like a donkey herder or mule herder or something like that. Where <laughs> But not goat. So you're close, but close but no cigar. Did they have equally questionable motives, or <laughs> not that I'm aware of? But uh, okay. his history is questionable. History is questionable. So who are these brothers? Well, we have tongueless guy. We got a little shit kid who looks like from Come and See, and we have yeah. the talker. The Z talker, like yeah. that kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, tongue, tongue, tongue. Do you have any favorite quotes from the tongueless guy? 
It's more like, hey, <laughs> sure it's like, people uh, oh, love that one. You're like, oh, good, because his tongue was taken mm. out by evil men. Yeah, what would you do with it? I don't know. Well, he doesn't have one anymore. But yes, the talker, yeah. they, they're able to sweet talk the the sweet young woman who just wants to be cheery and like lend out some food and like be merry and be like everyone's nice <laughs> nothing's gonna happen to me for now uh, but rj two movies in a row where mm-hmm. the jews harp appears the what could you uh could you maybe potentially <laughs> you know the thing it's like bang, 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 ah, bang. that's what that's called uh, yes, as uh, I guess you were not listening very closely as I said it multiple times last week, and it's in fact I probably said, was, and it said directly in by one of the characters, like, "What is that? A Jew's harp?" What was the movie we watched last week? Young Mister Lincoln. Mm, I don't remember that. Uh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> so why well, was it called that? I don't know. That's just what people called it. It's got other names too, but right. I was just kind of like, "Hey, that that's weird. That instrument shows up twice in a row." And, and I don't, hey, I, I don't, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if we've seen very many of those in the Criterion Collection, but now we got two. Uh, yeah. And then, Archie, well, much like that scene from last week's movie, maybe the the next scene uh, we're going to be discussing will slip your mind as well. Next Which one? Time. Uh the rape scene. Or at least no. the the long slow build of inevitability toward the um the turn. I mean, in my opinion, the entire thing is the rape scene because they're that's what they set out to do the whole time. So even though it's a slow build up, it's still a form of rape jerk. They were doing it the whole time, you know what I mean? You know well, what I mean, right. Well, it's like it's an extended thing of them sitting down, they're eating, and you know there's the threat. And the way that they're talking, and the way she doesn't seem to know how they're talking, but maybe she also thinks, I can be a little flirty. Well, nothing, that's what I mean, where they're nothing, like, nothing will come of it. Skin. And, 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 then, er, like, and, wow, then, and just earlier, you know, there was this yeah. discussion from and Gary talking about men and, like, what happens when a man just wants to take it. Um yeah, I, I'm not going to lie to you, Jared. I thought that was incredibly on the nose a little bit, where it's like, what if a man tries to force it? And she goes, I'll run away. And it's like, what if you can't run away? And then it happens again later, where uh, uh, when later in the cabin, when it's like, you know, some days start good, but they end bad. Mm-hmm. And then you go, hmm, <laughs> foreshadowing or Ingmar Perv Man. The, the, you know what I mean? The the perv man himself the one and only mm-hmm. anyways what were you saying uh yes yeah, so oh there's the mention of uh there's hey, this... maybe you'll get raped from yeah from earlier yeah and uh here we are because because i guess she did not heed this morning it has sort of like a morality play sort of sensibility the whole movie does i guess because mm-hmm. it's pretty succinct um and so, yeah, uh, she runs afoul of these brothers who hold her down and commit the crime. And then there's this startled moment of, like, everyone's got this look of, mm-hmm. like, oh, that just happened. And then she starts walking away. And then this panic moment comes of, like, she's running away, even though she's just kind of just, like, walking away. And then she gets her head caved in with a large branch. And, yeah. she, and she's dead. And these, she won't do that again. These bandits, these rapist bandits, they uh, proceed to strip her of her clothes, taking her fine uh, clothing, shoes, everything, pack it up into their bags and take off with their goats. I should also be noted that the kind of like the final line that gets crossed apparently before um, the actual... Uh, incident occurs uh is that she recognizes that this cute little goat right by her has the markings of another person who that these goats have probably been stolen from or perhaps something has befallen them what do you think could have befallen them it doesn't i mean uh, maybe they also got their head caved in Mm. with the branch or choked to death or or they that person's just missing some goats it's possible no it's very possible. And also, also, we get the payoff of what happened to that frog. Well, the, the sandwich gets opened, and out comes a frog. And the frog's alive. 
and I guess he hops off somewhere into the woods. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, and then it's a symbolic journey. It should also be noted that uh, it's pretty important, I guess, that while this is all happening, uh, in Gary is standing or sorry is hiding right there like probably like i don't know 50 60 feet away in complete view of this and does not interject does not she has a walk she thinks about throwing it but like she's overcome with fear for her safety i guess for herself um there is this implication i guess that she kind of when she's confessing later to uh tor that she like I willed it to happen, but I, I tried to. I thought about stopping it, but I couldn't do it. Which I mean, this is also kind of uh, that character's interpretations of what they've done uh, and their own f- figuring out their own guilt. When it's like, well, yeah, I mean, you're also kind of a victim of this situation. I don't think mm. she actually made it happen, but I guess like her saying that this could happen is maybe her saying I willed it to happen. I mean. That is how it works, Jared. No. That is how it works. No. Unfortunately. So the we cut to Max von Sydow waiting and anticipating his daughter to come home any minute at the gates of the homestead. But who appears instead, RJ? Some Duncan-esque boys. There's uh, Jimmy Duncan, Johnny <laughs> Duncan, Jacob Duncan, and... Uh, um, Pete's old Pete, dirty Pete. Pete, dirty Pete. Yeah. Well, it's our, it's the assailants, but the, there's the dramatic irony here, RJ. Mm. That, uh, nobody knows how anyone's related to what just happened. Cedow doesn't know who these three guys are other than what they present themselves as just wanderers who are hungry and cold and need a place to stay. Mm-hmm. These three guys are like, Hey, here's a place to stay. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, the kindness of his heart, he says, why don't you guys stay here? Yeah, that, those, and, meal. and so he, he, he invites them in and, you had, and they dine together. Uh, there's, as the food's getting prepared, there's a comment about the state of the one guy's shoes, the talker. Uh, there, there is, it's like these shoes have seen better days. <laughs> these sacks on feet. Yeah, those shoes are pretty rough. Yeah. The shoes are pretty rough. Um, then everyone starts eating out of the bowl of the communal bowl. You just take your bowl, you scoop it up. And sometimes you eat with Swap utensils. Other people just start eating with their hands. It's just like, ah, yeah. The way it was intended. I wonder, no. I wonder why people got sick so much. I mean. People still get sick now. but It's a pre-COVID world, though, Jared. Well, even There's before, a lot less rules back then. <laughs> a lot less rules. You know what I mean? People weren't as concerned about germs. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I think and while they're uh, observing the shoes, they talk about how a day can start out well and end badly. Yeah, which again is, uh, you know, it's right there. Yeah, but yes, and then yes, this is where uh, the 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 young boy, um, he is struggling with what's just transpired. I think. I think uh, he's got grief, Jared. And, and, well, and guilt, guilt, and he's he cannot eat, and he's like everyone's eating, and there's all these faces uh, that are looking at him, and he can feel their eyes judging him, and he, I think this is where you think he vomited, but I think he just like threw the bowl he, up in the he, air and kind of turned and yeah. maybe he was sick. But yeah, he does just hit it with his hand, right? But it looks like vomit is what. Well, comes that out. that's the, what they're eating though. Is it looks their food looks vomit. like vomit? Yes, yeah. which is yeah. you know it was a different time. It's eight thousand mm-hmm. years ago. So of course everyone's a little like, whoa, what's going on with this kid? And there's excuses given. Um, then they they put the kid to bed in this uh, nest of hay. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. And then there's like the weird old professor guy who I don't know if he's like a maybe he's like a former monk who, who's just left and he just does his own thing and he philosophizes. Um, he starts telling a tale, a monologue to this young boy. And then like <laughs> it seems like he just like passes out on him. Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't the, you? <laughs> no, <laughs> I wouldn't. But, you know, it's olden times. <laughs> I guess that's what you do. Mm-hmm. It's 8,000 years ago, Jack. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, it makes sense. At least. Uh, then we cut to the, the back to Tor and uh, Moretta, and they are fretting about their daughter staying out overnight. He's like, oh, there. She's fine. She's fine. Um, but Moretta, she's like, she gets up, she's pacing, and she hears a kid scream. 
Yeah. The kid scream. And she. What's his problem? I, well, he's getting punched in the head, apparently, by his brothers to shut him up. Mm-hmm. But but they're like, oh, no, no. He's fine. He's okay. It was a bird cry that you heard. Uh, and, of course, cause mm-hmm. so she, she, she comes over back to, like, kind of the dining area where these guys are sleeping for the night. And she's she's given gifts by these guys being like because they're almost like hey these guys are gonna let us work for them and we're gonna be fed and paid by them <laughs> this is a great deal let's suck up to the the boss's wife and be like hey we got some really nice gifts some really nice dresses from a, a sister of ours oh she died but she was so beautiful i mean there's a there's a little bit of spawning on there but i think someone like you could dress it up make it real nice and clean it up and of course to her horror she is looking at her daughter's clothes that she just dressed her daughter with mm-hmm. so she's mm-hmm. uh of course try- attempting to no sell this yeah and these guys are indifferent to her reaction of like oh great <laughs> and then what, what's it what did what sound did they make again th- th- that she made yeah oh great okay just wanted i i just couldn't hear you right the first time and then yeah. she tells tor about it and uh, mm-hmm. Tor's like, we gotta lock, we gotta like deadbolt that door. And she's like, oh, it's already done. You're like, oh man. This, yeah, it took gonna... a lot of effort for her to deadbolt that door too. That's a, probably a, that's probably a real heavy lock. But I mean, they could just open that too. The guys, no, no, it's because it's locked. They've locked him in from the outside. Oh, I see. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, uh, yeah, he goes and like goes and gets his his sword to like confront these guys. And then in Gary's like hiding out under like, I can't remember if it was under the stairs and he's like, what are you doing? And where the hell is my daughter? <laughs> like mm. Mason. And then she tells him what's happened. And he's just becomes more and more horrified about the reality of what's happened. And, um, uh, he goes and wrestles a tree <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what do you take from the tree scene? Just his frustration? He's just the str- trying to get it out? The struggle of nature, RJ, of the, the thirst for revenge. <laughs> and like and trying to like be the uh... trying to the mastery. The mastery, his rage that his daughter's dead, and he's like, I want to murder them. But that isn't well, very Christ like. I mean, that's not totally true though, because like I mean, if he was super Bible belt, like Old Testament's all about revenge. Well, so maybe he, maybe at this at this phase, it was like, no, you got you got to follow those teachings. Because mm. like these guys are doing pretty nice by them, but it's like, uh, so I, I that's like a maybe a glib thought of it, but that's kind of like it's it's a great visual. It looks really good. Yeah, um, yeah. that's that's kind of what I was imagining. It's like it's literally uh, the visual of him struggling with this internal, and it's like this big tree that he's like trying to rip out of its roots. Uh, like it's like I don't know, it's like maybe it's like punching the wall, <laughs> but or you just uh go and ask for the butcher's knife, which is it's kind of like uh Bubba Ray from uh wrestling saying, "Get the tables," because <laughs> it means shit Ooh. shit's going to get real. <laughs> so setting up the tables is yeah. when stuff really happens. Yeah, he 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 tried to suppress it, but it didn't take it didn't take, and so he goes to settle accounts. Um, he comes into the, the dining room while they're sleeping. He mm-hmm. locks the doors. He kind of stalks mm-hmm. around and he waits for the rooster caw to come marking morning. Um, and then there's a, uh, some hurly burly, some tussling. Ooh, a hurly burly. Uh, huh? one, uh the, some tossing. Yeah. Potentially uh, tongueless, so the tongueless brother. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he gets, stabbed in the neck like yeah, kind of like pretty, down pretty quick down through the collarbone he takes a leap through him uh, i think yeah. he, i think um tor gets probably stabbed there a little bit too it seemed he, he gets stabbed about three four times throughout the he does, extent yeah. of this right which is yeah. actually like you know it's realistic uh that he would yep. it's like the other movies they would be like oh no nah, he he dodged those ones it's like nah two guys running at each other a knife someone's gonna get he's gonna get nicked too mm. but he he does the kill and blow straight down through because mm-hmm. the, the implication too is that this guy is like a was a knight or something. Like he's got like a prestige. He's got land that was probably given to him, or like I don't know. But it's all just background. Like it doesn't even matter. It's all about this occurrence, of, about this this virgin spring that we're moving toward. 
Mm. Um, and then we get some fire grappling. Um. So. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of fire, and then right a, on, to- on, on, on top, on top of, of the fire, fire and he's just yeah. like, like holding him down, and he's also cooking. <laughs> it's like as he's holding him on down the fire and like choking mm-hmm. him, or like I was a, cool with that though. Yeah, you're cool with that. So yeah, yeah. so he, we, he gets up and he's all like you know burnt and like I'm yeah, like yeah he's a little crispy. What, what kind of ointments do they got for back then to treat these burns? Probably like an onion. Yeah, an onion wrap on it. It was the style of the time. <laughs> it was the style. Of, it was the style at the time, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> but then RJ, we yeah. get the. Uh, the, the the peak the the crescendo <laughs> the crescendo of the yeah. film for me where I, you're like yes. so this so mom so the mom's watching this go down because she's a little bloodthirsty too but at the same time she's also pretty horrified and I think there's sort of coming a dawning on her it's like well clearly it was these two guys who murder her. and this young boy definitely did not have anything to do with that per se he's under the influence of her of the brothers like he has no choice and so she's kind of like kind of like coddling him like like her own child because she also realizes oh fuck (laughs) my husband's going to kill this Mm -hmm. kid and rj what happens (laughs) in probably one of the most amazing ingmar bergman scenes that i have seen so far uh, Max von Sydow with an incredible wingspan. I Thank think we you. need to we need yeah. to we, we, address. There, there's been some like we, I've been avoiding the word up until now because yeah. I was like, when's the time we start hitting on that? Because it's, we've seen it earlier. Like there's the oh, scene yes. where, where he's like trying to like do his like his lashes. Like he's uh, after he's wrestled with the thing. He's, like, he's trying to do the flagellation thing. Um, yeah. Clean himself with water and like he's whipping yeah. himself with the having a bath. I guess yeah. like to me it's, it reads like flagellation, but I think that's like medieval bath times. I think it's a little bit of both. I think yeah. it was a bath, but it was like, why would you take a bath to get ready to go kill people? Wouldn't you want to take a bath after? But I think he was trying to cleanse himself and then go to do it right. so that he went in pure. So anyways, yeah, we get some wingspan stuff. And I think the the reason I bring it up now is because you see that wingspan and then his arms just come down upon this child. This child. <laughs> this child, like an eight-year-old boy or something. And uh, he just turns this boy he ho- sideways. He, he, he hoists him up like he's about to do like a running power slam. Yeah, he picks him up. He turns him about sideways. He takes a step or two and he tosses him. Hurls. And he, he tosses him he, he, right into the wall. He sp- <laughs> Actually, I see. I saw you use child tossing as a letter. But I'm like, that's not a toss. That's a smashing. <laughs> well, I mean, he, some, he some magic. this child and he... <laughs> batters this child against this wall across against like i don't know like a shelf like with such force i mm-hmm. i don't know i don't know if i don't think it's bergman's intent but i burst out laughing like and i cause, like uh, yeah i had it's hilarious i had totally hilarious. Forg- i had totally forgotten about it how could you forget? The I don't know person. how I could. I don't know how. It was but the first thing I noticed about this movie. It's the first thing you noticed in the entire time of the movie. An it, hour, an hour and twenty minutes in. An oh. hour and twenty minutes. I went, holy shit! He just threw a kid. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that was. It was the first thing I noticed. I went, holy buck, baby. So yeah, um, that that then that kid's dead. <laughs> Broke his dead neck. Oh yeah, he's dead. Problem solved. All is right with the world. Order restored. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now there's a little matter of finding the body of his daughter. Yeah, I mean that's second secondary. Right? Well, it's... so so they go on this like yeah they're 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 on the like the whole it's almost like a, a Wes Anderson scene where like everyone's still surviving. They're all like kind of turn into a procession and they're making their way through the woods and they're walking and talking. Mm, yeah yeah they're just yeah they're all walking and talking walking out there and then uh it's like her family too or her parents or whatever and then or no I, well he's it's all the it's all the it's all the help it's, it's like all it's, the, it's, yeah, it's all the it's all, it's all the, the employees people. of the farm and stuff like that and yeah. uh and gary's t- leading them there and uh, there's also we see uh a, a crow once again as the uh, the woods. Uh, and so you believe that that crow could potentially be it's just a crow what are you talking about? Crow? It's just it's just a crow, RJ. Okay. okay. Uh, and then we get to the scene of the crime, 
and the, the 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 daughters remains are still there and they look down upon them and in in honor of her death and what he's done he will he says he will build a church on this mm. on this site uh to, to purify it of what's happened here and honor his daughter and as he lifts her body up rj a spring mm. bursts forth from the ground is is the spring sexually active no oh has it ever I, I, not that i'm aware of oh so what would you how would you describe that miraculous question, oh. question mark I see, I see, I see, I see. And, and hence, and hence, we have our virgin spring. And then, yes, yeah. It's not just a metaphor, Jarrett. It's a way or of life. It? <laughs> or a, is it? It's a way of life. So, uh, yeah. So this was a uh, my rewatch of this movie, and I still think this is some some great old Ingmar Bergman medieval movie making. Okay. That transports me right to the 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 land of Seven Seal, and uh, Bergman, mm-hmm. I guess, just like telling a story that I think he did not write this one. Someone else did. Uh, it was re- it was based U- on a U- book. It's Ula Isaacson. Yeah, it was based she, on the book. Uh, yeah, who, uh, a uh, woman wrote this, and let's see here. I'm not sure. I'm, not, I'm, like, I'm obviously not going to be super familiar with uh, this with the Swedish writers, but yeah, the story was adapted by a screenwriter from a 13th century Swedish ballad. R.J. Tor's daughter in Vange. So is the ballad just that the daughter got got and then Tor got them? It's about a virgin spring. But what do you think okay. that means in a metaphorical sense? Yeah. Let's see here. Let's see if there's a description of it. Localization. There's a ballad. I mean, it's based on a probably very <laughs> eh. attractive story. It's probably about 100 words long. 100 words? Fucking rip it. Okay, I could. Why? why well, why here we go. Here we go. Pierre Tyerson's daughters in Vange. The forest was so cold. They slept asleep too long while the forest came into leaf. The youngest one woke up first. The forest. And so she woke up the others while the forest. Like this is how it's written. Mm-hmm. Then they sat up on their beds. So they braided each other's locks. So they put on their silken cloths. And so they went to the church. But when they came to the Vange Hill, they met three highwaymen. You either be highwaymen's wives, or would you lose your young lives? See what they're saying there? Uh, I see, I see. We do not wish to be highwaymen's wives. We'd rather lose our young lives. They cut off their heads off on a log of birch. There soon three well sprung up. The bodies buried in the mud, the clothes taken to the village. When they came to Vange Farm, Lady Karen met them in the yard. And would you buy silken shifts by nine maidens knitted and stitched? Untie your sacks and let me see. Perhaps I know all three. Lady Karen beat her chest in pain and went to find Peter Tyerson. There are three highwaymen in our yard. We have our daughter slain. Or sorry, who have our daughter slain. Peter Tyerson grasped, yeah, Peter Tyerson grasped his sword. He slew the eldest too. The third he left alive. And then he asked him thus, What is your father's name? What is your mother's name? Our father is Peter Tyce Tyerson in Vange. Our mother is Lady Karen in Strange. Pierre Tyerson <laughs> then went to the smithy and had iron crafted round his waist. What shall we do for our sins? We shall build a church of lime and stone. That church will be named Karna, and we will willingly build it. Hmm. <laughs> you know, nowhere in here did I hear of a, a, a prolonged rape scene. Well, I feel like Bergman added that flair himself. Well, it happens between the text, RJ. Are you talking about between the between the lines? Mm-hmm. What ha- are you, are you talking about what happens off panel, Jarrett? Mm-hmm. Off panel? I don't know about this off panel stuff. Okay, well, I, hey, that's why people come to this podcast. They want to hear the things <laughs> They're that here. We, only we can offer. They're here for facts. They're here for facts. And that was a ballad, a tale told by Duncan J. Francis, Mm -hmm. one of the 
The biggest of them all, some would say. Huge. Biggest what? Huge. I don't want to say at the moment. Interesting, interesting. So th- do you think that that gives you uh, more kind of depth to your understanding of the no, story? No, not really. I mean, it's. Mm. I mean, it took uh, this adaptation of this, you know, 100 word story uh mm. extrapolates it for modern audiences if it, it, it uh fleshes it out while still kind of like keeping the the kernel of mystery i guess to things mm-hmm. which is something that movies allow for you mm-hmm. the the reality i guess of the story is just like well there is no virgin spring there's only violence there's no odin and crows there's just life's gone and uh, your own thinking about your own struggling with your spiritual realm, and whether or not you should have that dictate how you handle matters. Can you tell me about your spiritual realm? Like I about crows? No, just in general. <laughs> tell me about what, how your spiritual realm is lately. Lately, it's it's swimmingly. It's going it swimmingly. Is? Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, that's okay, then. Same as always. Yeah, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing like really wrong with that, mm-hmm. if you know if you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Sure. So yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a fan of the yeah, spring. I saw uh, looks great. I think uh, I I like the uh simplicity of the story. I think it is very direct. Um it doesn't it, it moves real fast. Uh, I was kind of surprised watching it where I was just like, Oh, it's almost over. <laughs> like I was just kind of like surprised. Um, yeah. cause it's not, I, I, I mean, as far as, uh, if you calling this like a rape revenge movie, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't have the trappings of those types of movies that we now have, mm-hmm. um, where there's a lot of focus on the actual rape. It's kind of like there, and it's brutal, fast, mm-hmm. and then it's like then she's dead, very quick. It's not like uh, sometimes you feel like these movies are really wanting to linger on it. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, I I thought that the rape scene in this one was prolonged. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I watched it again, and like it seems it's pretty quick. I mean. It's probably like two minutes long. No, <laughs> I it, to me it felt like it was right. two, two minutes long. Um, I don't know, maybe, but I mean, also, no one would have expected me not to think that it went on for a long time. But right, yeah, yeah, just uh, just yeah, as like, a counter we, we, we to have, that, you have to bust out the stopwatch more often. I I mean, I'll pull it up right now. But um, just as a counter, uh, I I thought it was actually a uh, a prolonged one. I mean, is is it? How do you show these and not make it feel like it's prolonged? I don't know. If it's off panel, if you do it off panel, Jarrett, I think. Nah, I don't know. Not a lot of people do it off panel, so don't know what to say about that. Right. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Anyways, what else were you saying? Uh, I mean, that was about it. That. Uh... Yeah, I, I really like this movie, but I'm curious, RJ, what you think of The Virgin Spring? Because we, we have other movies to discuss. So we some, do. Some, some companion films. Just a couple. Just a couple. Uh, well, what do you think, I thought? I don't care. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't, what, do, I, what, what do you think, I thought? I don't care. I don't, I, I don't care to say. <laughs> um, I see. I see. Uh, I think this movie is fine. It's fine. I like a lot of other Bergmans a lot better. Um, I know. I know you just kind of outlined why you don't think it's a rape revenge movie, but to me, surface level, it's still a rape revenge movie. It's still just a movie about rape, and like I don't, I don't know. I've mentioned this a lot of the time. I talk about it whenever I talk about animal stuff, and same thing here. It's like. And I, I did read one thing. I, I don't do research in movies a lot, but I was like, all right, let me see what let me see what the perv man said about this. If there was any intent there or anything like that. And uh, I didn't really find anything he was talking about, but I just other people describing the movie. And they're kind of just like, yeah, it's like the brutality of the act itself. It's like you need to see it because it's the act itself. And it's like, 
I don't know. I don't need to see a proctology to know what happens. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I know what's happening in that procedure. And it's like, I know that these things well, happen. Well, you, you see it in Uncut Gems. I mean, yes, in Uncut Gems, but that's a different kind of Criterion film. We'll get there eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm always just kind of like, I don't know what to think about that. Like, I understand why people do say things where it's like, it's kind of like for like awareness, I guess, or it's just like, yeah, these are gross things. And it's just like, it shouldn't be portrayed in a nice way. And it's like, I get that. But then at the same time, I'm like, do we need it at all? I don't know. Like, I don't know where to fall on that, that line. So this is one of those weird movies for me where it's just kind of like, it's like, I don't know. I like the, like, I like how it looks. I like Bergman. Usually this one, I was like, it's like the, uh, all, the whole setup for the rape stuff, I'm just kind of, eh. Like, I, I don't much care for it. And, like, I knew that was coming, so I'm not going to lie to you. It kind of, it really detracted my interest from it to be, like, even going in where I was like, oh, yeah, this is the rape one. Okay. So I watched that, and I was like, eh, I don't really much care for that. Um, and it's like I said earlier, this the kind of on the no stuff, too, with that lady. It's like, well, maybe you're going to get raped one day. And it's Less like, than a minute. Yeah, and then it's like a minute later, and you, oh, the rape scene is yep. less than a minute? So what, like fifty seconds? I mean, if you want to, like the entire like the the anxiety and stress around the situation is like obviously yeah. quite a bit longer. But yeah. the the actual like, and it's like, I mean, everyone's basically fully dressed, I yeah. guess, for the entire thing. Um, usually in like later films it's always about like hey let's watch the dress get sliced open and pop apart and it's like oh she's not wearing a bra like that's the sort of stuff where i'm like this is like brutal and and direct while showing it while not shying away from it and being like you know between the lines yeah um but yeah it's it's over like yeah like i said it's about yeah less than one minute well i mean comparatively and we're not there yet but last house on the left 70s they cut away from it and then last house on the left 2009 it's it's even longer i think and even worse um but that's the 2000s man they were edgy so anyways i don't know virgin spring it's like i can see like the the merits that uh, uh that are good there and i understand like this kind of play between like uh it's like do do i repent or do, do we allow repentance and savior or do i kill all of them and then he does, which I actually liked that. <laughs> I, I, I liked the child tossing. It's like, yeah, fucking get him. How could get you? Him. How could you not? Love yeah, a good child smashing. I mean, that's something you don't see no. every day. But I mean, that's what the basis of all. Where, these where's that? Are. Where's that subgenre and exploitation? Could you imagine if in Home Alone, if Marv just picked up Macaulay Culkin and just threw him against a wall and he died? <laughs> His neck's broken. That. Well, I mean, that's that's the real Home Alone. That's the real Home Alone. That's the one that uh, some of the uh, the Home Alone truthers out there are looking for. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm kind of I'm in between on this one. I uh, I like a, a good bit of it. I do like all the child toss and Max Van Seed. That was pretty cool. But uh, with that weird beard of his. Yeah, with that weird beard of his. Um, and like some of the other, like I don't even care like the setup where it's like well, i gotta go take the candles and i'm going by myself it's i could see some people picking up that that's not even it for me because as the all these remakes show you man there's a lot of opportunity for people to just be alone in given situations so whatever well, the sometimes setup is, sometimes is you need to get dr- sometimes you just want to get some pot yeah yeah and that's what i mean sometimes the setup is irrelevant but i don't know i'm i'm split on Vir- virgin spring where i watch it and i go yeah yeah but I, I, I mean, I understand why some people are big dogs into it. I'm just, just not one of them. You know what I mean? It's got average rating of four point one. I think that's high. That's. I think it's. I think that's exactly about where it belongs to be, though. I it's, think that's high. It's, it's in the. It's in that range. It's, it's a, yeah. It's a, it's a. It's a difficult movie. That doesn't mean it can't be great. Sure, sure, sure. So tell me, uh, do you have anything else to say on Virgin Spring? Uh, no, no, that's about it. But I mean, so this this movie and its greatness, it inspired Wes Craven, the master of horror, mm-hmm. um, to make his own version for uh, for the Grindhouse set. Um, so like Wes Craven, uh, I've never seen one of these and I don't know what he's directed, but Wes Craven kind of cut his teeth uh, as a filmmaker doing pornography. 
Uh, he, so Wes he, Craven did pornography? Yeah, like back... Have we talked about that before? Because this is news to me. I, I don't know if I've mentioned it specifically, but yeah, he was... Uh, he was hanging out. I don't know if his name's on a lot of these, a lot of films. Well, there's one here called The Fireworks Woman. What mm. happens when a brother and sister break the ultimate taboo? What happens, Jared? Angela and Peter are siblings and have loved each other, have loved each other since they were kids. They are both physically attracted to each other, but Peter is studying to become a priest. She finally gets in bed with him, and after that, Peter starts to have second thoughts on his plan for the future. This is a Wes Craven film? This is a Wes Craven film. This what is, is it the, called? The, the, the Fireworks Woman. And it's the movie he made between Last House on the Left and The Hills Have Eyes. But I do believe he has huh. some other films that he worked on in that era that he does not have his name on whatsoever. Like, he worked on stuff. Because this movie kicks off with the the acting of the parents and the daughter talking about how they can see the your nipples through your shit. Uh, oh, uh, I actually have a quote for oh, you. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I figured you would. Um, there is a, a quote that the dad says, uh, what's this tits business? <laughs> Which I went, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, it's very believable dialogue. And it, it's so fucking poorly shot. Like What's it's this? it's it's just it's just at an angle. <laughs> you're like you're like what the heck? like this is so I haven't I had not seen Last House on the Left 1972 for a, a long time. Uh, at one point, I thought it was like a very like effective movie. Like when I first watched it, sure. And then the second time I watched it, I thought it was still like a f- fairly uh, effective movie. Um, mm-hmm. But this time around, it's like I was watching this movie for the first time. Like it, it felt so not familiar, even though I knew exactly where it was going. But good lord, this this movie is rough in terms of just filmmaking, just purely on the filmmaking level. It's like this is so amateurish. Like these parents are like such shit actors. The daughter's terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, she's bad. I mean, they're all kind of not great. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, da- the da- killers da- David, David Hess is so good. So, Wh- who's David Hess? He's like the the, the lead rapist. He's the, he's uh, like he, yeah, he's good. Yeah, he good. he becomes like that's one of his things though. He's also a movie called House on the Edge of the Park. Guess what he plays, RJ? See, that's the thing I'd be afraid of is being typecast as just a rapist all the time. Well, he directed a Christmas horror movie as well. He, uh, yeah, yeah, called To All a Good Night. And I'm not sure if you know this. He did that song, that awesome song in Last House 1972 that uh, you're all alone now. That's that's uh, that's I, him. <laughs> I will say uh, one thing about Last House 72 is the music is good. Yeah. Like I, I actually really liked the music stuff in uh, in the 70s one. Yeah, that, that song it's that plays well. it's like well. basically after – the rape has happened Mm -hmm. and then at the very end that song that's david hess uh singing yeah so okay yeah the the music's used very well and so the other guy the the gray-haired guy uh fred j lincoln who plays weasel uh he is a he was a porn producer uh like full on (laughs) i'm sure he did a little bit of his own work as well if you know what i'm saying that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're saying. Could you uh, clarify that he, for he me, did, please? He did a little bit of fucking, RJ. Uh, Excuse I, me? A little bit of fucking. I think he, he, he fucks on, on camera. For money? For money. And he's here in this movie. And yeah, they're they're the best part, which is funny to me that like, the two like porn actors. I mean, like, David, Hess, I don't, David Hess is not, to my knowledge, but would it surprise me to learn that he had done it? No. I mean, the 2009 rapists are i think more surprising but we can talk about oh that we'll, we'll get, get there. there we'll talk about yeah that. yeah so last house on the left it's kind of the same idea uh almost exactly uh but this is like young girl she's going to go hang out with her like friend from the wrong side of the tracks who just seems like a perfectly normal person um and they're, they're, they go hang out they get ice cream uh but well in the meantime some like total degenerate murderer child molesters have just gotten broken out of jail somehow by like this crazy woman named Sadie Mm -hmm. and uh, David Hess's character's son who he hooked on heroin. Uh, 
so they're, yeah, it's a strange plot point. Yeah, so they're they're on uh, they're on the run and they're just hanging out in mm-hmm. this apartment and uh, <laughs> just being horrible. But they got a cat and they seem pretty nice to the cat. The cat, nothing nothing yeah. befalls the kitty. Uh, you're, yep. uh, that when I was watching this, I was like, oh shit! I wonder if our, our, no, I, it's <laughs> it's just there's there's just talk of dog violence. Yeah, they say she stomp the the female stomp accomplice stomped dog. him into the ground, and then you go, oh, that's that's not good. No. But yeah, they are nice to the kitty. Yeah, the kitty's just hanging out in this like. Mm-hmm. These guys just seem like I don't know, like like characters. They, they seem much more better developed than like the people you're supposed to be like rooting for. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they they make a mistake and go to go buy some drugs from this from these guys, and they wind up getting taken for a ride. And mm-hmm. then so like the whole like chunk, huge chunk of this movie is so like chunky. Like it's so poorly made, and then they get to the woods where they've like loaded them up in the trunk, and they just drive out to the to the woods, which is conveniently right nearby the daughter's own home. And that's when this movie kind of kicks into another gear of just like, oh, because it's like mm-hmm. the 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 way it's made is so much better once they get to the woods. Where in like it's. It's because it's effective because it feels like you're there and this is happening and it's grueling and you get there's the humiliation. David has to tell him the one girl just like to piss yourself. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, and you're it's just strange. like and you're just like oh because they it's just the power they can like mm-hmm. they'll do whatever they want and they're like yeah I want you two to make it with each other and like the sobbing and oh it's just like god damn uh, and they tried like there's an escape a prolonged escape scene. Um, and then, but eventually everything turns horrible. Um, and once again, the actual like, um, rape that happens, I think is worse in a lot of ways than in Virgin Spring because there's this This weird, yeah, I I think there's this like certain visual cues that are really like terrifying. Like there's Mm -hmm. this scene. Yeah. I don't know. It's like her hand digging into the ground is like, was way worse. I think in some ways it feels it's like far more like, Oh, you're right there, huh? Alongside. I mean, and like, it's abs- like, yeah. yeah, it's like that thought process of what would happen far, far more like gee Christ. And then, and then, then the music kicks in. Now you're all alone now. And she, uh, she goes wandering off and she's like making her escape in this sleepy haze toward the water. And everybody knows what's going to happen next. Um, they and, uh, uh, go to McDonald's. They go to McDonald's. The worst fate imaginable. <laughs> uh, yeah, they shoot her dead, and you're kind of like at that point relieved that it's over. Mm-hmm. Um, for now, for now, and then they uh, they clean themselves up and they are like, "Oh, we need a place to stay. Let's go mm-hmm. over to this house, which is the parents, and they have a nice mm-hmm. little dinner." And David Hess is all like, his hair's all slicked back. He looks like a a young yuppie in 1972 before yuppies were a thing. But he looks like a nice, clean Italian boy. Just a nice Italian boy. That's what. Yeah, and but then of course they're like when they're like, "Oh, you can stay the night," and they're like, they go to her room. Oh, you believe this? What a coincidence! Look, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But and but oh, of course, there's also like this whole thing going on with the police, <laughs> the the uh, the Keystone cops, uh, sheriff and deputy, uh, who are just like <laughs> having fun. With uh, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird how slapsticky it is in between all the other stuff, where it's just like it's like horrible rape, and it's like, by gumption, I tell you, I saw a bug once. It was the biggest bug I ever saw. Didn't you ever seen a bug like that? And then you go, I, c- and then I go, can't oh, have oh, you oh, riding oh. on the hood of the truck. <laughs> yeah. I, I got this much weight. I can't have you on there. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's cause, it's cause it is like, oh, the police, they can't help either. You're on your own. Yeah, well, that was a strange one, one thing leads to another, and the parents figure out that their daughter has been murdered by these horrible people, and now yeah. revenge must be had. But we're going to like home alone it up a little bit, but yeah. we're also going to do a, a little twist on it where you're like, the mom, she's going to take Fred Lincoln out to the lake and be like, I'm going to make you, I'm going to get you to tie your hands behind your back and give it to me. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I'm that good. And she's like, cool. All right, let's do it. And then she proceeds to give him a blowjob. <laughs> I'm like, 
what? <laughs> Why would you do that? Because she's going to bite his dick off. We all know it's coming. We all know. She's... But you're like, well, yeah, but like this guy's like a, like what? What's he got? Like all over him? Like you just, oh dear, that's a that's a poor decision that you made. It's a bad call on everyone. That, that everyone made a bad call. But you're like, now you're like, geez, now you now now you got that out of it. But you bit his dick off, I guess. So bad call from everyone. Everyone, and then Dad's guy got his like little like his traps, like he's Kevin McAllister. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's, it goes real home alone. He's like putting sha- shaving cream on the floor, and then David Hess is like pretending to slip on it. Uh, and then we have yeah, like he, get, he gets up and he goes, "Boy, you got me." Yeah, oh, you guys, and then it's like they have like yeah. this like the, the the only thing I really ever remember about this movie is the dad and David Hess like circling each other in that living room, <laughs> like, yeah. and, and that's all I ever see in him. Like he hits the little chainsaw going rawr, rawr, endlessly, like and it's just them circling around each other, exploitation yeah. cinema. At its peak, this is this is a pretty prime example of like a lot of really shitty movies that are going to be coming out for the the rest of our lives, mm. and the rest of the rest of our lives. That's also. right. <clears throat> you know I mean? So I mean, so I'd, I'd seen yeah. this, I've seen this before. Uh, this is like viewing number three. Uh, it's definitely the probably the worst viewing of it I've had yet. So yeah. I, I I now just like the idea that Wes Craven is a, a good director. Boy oh boy, is he a good director? Do you think though? Well, I mean the the dude has I've two talked about this for a long two, time. two super two two super hits. He's got Nightmare. Yeah. He's got Nightmare on Elm Street and, and Scream. Uh, and Scream, right? Uh, People under the stairs is fine. Shockers, whatever. Serpent yeah. in the rainbows, whatever. Yeah. yeah. For the for the reputation this guy's got, like he's like a George Romero. No. No, 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 not even. And see, I feel the same about him as I do like Toby Hooper. Toby Hooper even less so. But, but Toby uh, Hooper has directed the best horror movie ever made. So yeah, but there's there, only so, that. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's okay, but I. I mean, for Wes Craven, it is it is very much just like, yeah, Nightmare's awesome, Scream is awesome, but all these other movies, Hills of Eyes, I don't like. Like, I mean, yeah, obviously, that... I'm sure you can tell, I'm not a big fan of The Last House on the Left. I, it's just really, really, I don't care for this stuff. And when I watch it, and that's what I mean when I watch this. It's like, why do people like rape revenge stuff so much? I don't get it. That's just me, and I I realize that that's just me, but. I don't get it, Jared. I'm like, why do people love this? But why? So then, why did you watch the 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 sequel? Because because you, 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 you know you, this, you just want to keep going deeper and deeper on this. No, you know this. If it, if I didn't watch it now, I never would have because I was like, well, if these movies are attached to the Criterion, it's the it is literally the only time I will watch this. Because if I didn't watch it now, any Creeptobro would have gone. Should have watched it when we watched the Criterion. It's too late now. You know what I mean? So I had to. Have you seen the the remake? I have. I have actually seen the remake. Yeah. I a big I, fan. Uh, I it's a lot better than the original. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I feel the same way about both of them. I'm just like, uh, whatever. But uh this one, the remake does have like a it's got a few weird things in there. Like, I mean, there's some cool deaths near the end when the dad actually goes for it. But um I, I I didn't really like Garrett Dillahunt as the rapist because I see I've seen him in a lot of other things like the lead rapist, uh, <laughs> Krug, lead, the, yeah, Krug, and uh, I, he's in a lot of other things where he's really wholesome and I was like oh and then I saw him as this rapist and I went oh what about as a serial killer in Deadwood? Um, I don't think I got that far in Deadwood. I only watched like season one and a half of Deadwood and then I stopped. I think. Yeah, uh, and then uh, Aaron Paul's in there too, but mm-hmm. um, Jesse, and, then that, and Jesse, and then that guy who's just like just like a sad crying guy in everything he's ever done. Who's the kid? But um, what was I gonna say? So he's got one thing that's really weird. Uh, in the intro, there's like really long lingering shots of this girl putting clothes on, where it shows like her like buckling her fly and stuff like that, and you're just kind of like. But it lingers there for a long time. You're like, why are you emphasizing on this? It's like, we get it. I know she's going to get raped eventually. But it's like, 
why are you why are you putting so much time into showing this? I thought it was strange, Jared. I thought it was a strange thing for them to do. Uh, but anyways, then uh, there's there's better setup for, I think, the things that happen. Uh, to It's a, a believable story for like what's happening to the girls and how they get put in that situation and things of that nature. So, yeah, the remake. Mm-hmm. 2000s. What do you think? of uh the movie i mean i haven't watched yeah. it since 2014 mm, it's quite a while ago some home invasion action uh yeah you have a little home invasion little uh mm. revenge well i think of the the like when we were started getting these uh remakes of rape revenge movies in the 2000s because there's the i spit on your grave movies there's mm-hmm. three of them and I've 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 seen the first two, and I've seen the original. Uh, I have no real impulse to rewatch. I spit on your grave at all, like the original one, uh, because if you want to talk about extended scenes, mm, one uh, of those that is a series. It's like oh, she got raped by one group of men, and then she escapes, and then she finds another group who do likewise. They do it. They do it at two. Yeah, that's kind of like I mean, mm. I might be misremembering all that, but yeah, it's it's pretty like extended. And then the payoff is she gets revenge; she doesn't just get killed and has to be like venged. I know. Uh, so there's like so that one's like oh she's empowered now, <laughs> which is like such a load of shit. But then there's the Miss Forty Five. That's the movie I'm thinking of where it's like yeah, it hap- it, it keeps happening to her in like a single night. And then, and then she goes crazy, mm. and then she, and then she becomes Miss Forty Five, the, the killer nun. I mean, that yeah. sounds fine. <laughs> yeah, it's not your thing, RJ. It's... I know. Well, I mean, I, I honestly, I also don't get with the empowering of revenge things. You know, like remember when we watched Glass, or uh, what was the one before Split? Split. And I was like, it's like I feel like this movie sends a bad message that it's good to be abused because then then it makes you empowering. <laughs> you it's superpowers. Like, yeah, and it's like I feel like that's the wrong way to approach this thing. So that's what I mean too. You know, I'm uh, all this with a grain of salt. I, I I realize I have my own hangups. So I don't think anyone thought I would be a fan of these movies. So I'm not no. gonna I'm not gonna harp on things I didn't like about it. It's just yeah, it's just not my bag, baby. It's not your bag. It's just not my bag, man. So anyways, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, my advice, um, if you're an exploitation fin- cinema fan uh, only, who like is thorough and wants to watch all these Wes Craven movies or whatever, watch the original Last House, I guess. Get it out of the way. I, I, think, it, I think it ages worse as time goes on. Mm-hmm. The, the remake I've seen once, and I thought it was actually pr- pretty decent for like a, nine, like a 2009 horror movie remake. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually am I'm surprised to actually see quite a few people I follow echo that. Mm. But yeah, it's again not for everybody. Uh, the, the, this, the, yeah. these movies come with a big caveat. It's like, yeah, if you can't watch that type of movie, do not watch it. Like, it's just like, and that's yep. fair. I'm not going to judge somebody for like not being into these movies. I, I'm not like into them. I watch these movies because I find them you just take them as they are. Yeah. It's not like, yeah, I'm not going to be the, I mean, I don't watch these movies and be like, oh yeah, I can't wait to watch another one. It's like, nah, yeah. I've got to be in the but, right, I have to be in the right mindset of like, this is what I'm signing up for. And, yeah. and my tolerance, yeah. of course, probably over time will get less and less, uh, strong toward this type yeah. of material. As, as you know, you realize it's like, yeah, these are real things that, uh, I mean, I mean, children get thrown again to walls and get That's killed very all the true. time, and it's, it's not and it's not funny. Um, <laughs> child not abuse, in real life. child abuse, not funny. RJ, I mean, you're, I I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not afraid to say it. You're, you're anti. Uh, yeah. I'm against it. I'm I mean, against I, it. Uh, uh, but uh, am I, I am I for I, Max von Sydow tossing a child into a, a game of wall and killing? In, a movie in, in, setting, in, in, in this yes. like art house uh, movie that is disguising a, a rape revenge story before that was like a, a genre at all that then last house on the left was so inspired by it's like let's do it but even the dirtier and uh, then everyone went 
this is money. People will turn out in droves for it. Well, there's one movie that like uh, is getting re-released uh, next year. Uh, thriller, a cruel picture. Ooh, boy. That's a, that is a movie for you, my friend. That's a wild one. Yep. See, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying too. Like, I, I know what you mean. You're like, yeah, you, you, you're not in love with that stuff. It's just, it's something you watch in movies. Sometimes I get it. I think the issue is there are people who are really into that. And then you go, Oh, that's well, I mean, like I, I said, mean, that's everything. When, when I was watching that, uh, that documentary just like last yeah. night uh the wave one on mail order murder it's like these the act so the actors in these movies they were just talking about like well we've met these people who are into the, these movies where it's like women being strangled <laughs> dragged it and then dragged into the woods you meet the people who are like into these movies and they're just like the nicest people <laughs> They're just they're the ones <laughs> like, that you see at least the ones that you see. But it's like then there's like these guys are like oh, I'm such a fan of your movies. Sign one yeah. sign my DVD tape. And then you go <laughs> no thank you. Well they well you take their money. Well you could you you, you, you got to fleece the marks RJ. I mean that's this is a business working at a horror convention. I mean just a little bit. Yeah. It's just a little bit. And you can you can learn more over at uh, OnlyFans. On our OnlyFans? Well, just OnlyFans in general. Well, we have one too now, Jared. Oh, like, yeah. Anything's possible. It's possible. Just, just make requests. Yeah, we can do it. Get, as long as the money's right, we'll be fine. <laughs> and, and it's, and it's, it's legal in our territory. Nice and legal. Nice and legal. No. Yeah. yeah uh, these you, are movies. These are movies. I mean, that's my takeaway, but, you know. Right. Um... But you have no problem with war movies. Nah, man. <laughs> war is fine. War is fine. At least it's a. Cons- I, like I mean, it. at least it's like a consensual thing where it's, it's like heroic. I kill, you, I kill you or you kill me. It's not it's, consensual though. But what? like, do you, well, I mean, not the guys drafted, but at least it's. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it sucks. It sucks yeah. super shit, and I think we're like more brainwashed to that than anything else. I mean, yeah, I'd rather. I I I, I kind of hate war movies. Um, but you I'm, love dad movies. I do. I do love dad movies. But like, there's there's coming a point where like there's certain situations where I just start going, oh fuck. It's just like, too gratuitous what, 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 for you. What? No, no. It's just like the whole idea of um, killing each other. Yeah, you're always oh, gonna make the ultimate sacrifice. And so what? No. Why? But then, but sometimes it's necessary. <laughs> You die for your well, freedom. It's like fuck, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it's necessary. It's just you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just a, a child of summer, RJ. Like uh, smiles of summer night, like that kind of child. <laughs> yeah, like a vampire baby. I see. Yeah, I yeah. see. You want to hear from some people who uh, hate the Virgin Spring? Sure. Well, we've got uh, maybe a listener of the podcast uh, okay. who follows us on Letterboxd, Christopher Matson, Interesting. Uh, who gave this half a star and says, this movie only served to confirm to me the ponderousness of Ingmar Bergman. And I'll also note that uh, uh, the, his next viewing of this was, or his next movie he watched after this was Last House on the Left, which he gave uh, one and a half stars to. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, Chris Matson ha- likes It's a Wonderful Life, The Thing, Amityville, The Ev- Evil Escapes, and Hard Ticket to Hawaii, Jerry, oh. which is a pretty premium film. Mm-hmm. Although Chris Matson gave Half Star to Brokeback, which I find interesting because that movie's awesome. Half a star to The Exorcist 3? Get out of here, Chris. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Get out of here. But Half a star to Hereditary in Midsommar as well, so it's kind of like... <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? He knows what I mean. What else we got? Well, we've got Wintergreen. Okay. Uh, one star. Wow. This is really bad. That's it. Uh, all four of Wintergreen's favorite movies are The Matrix. Uh, ratings are subjective and are only given for my benefit, i.e. to help me organize films I really like on Letterbox lists and stuff. I write reviews usually, and really, I'll watch just about anything. I feel like I've heard this said by other M- multiple people. Multiple times. Maybe this yes. is just like a different name. For Maybe. 
Well, they five starred Night of the Hunter, so you you know take that as you will. Mm-hmm. I mean, they don't actually they don't really have a ton of five star films. Okay. Ooh, they also half starred Midsummer, half starred the uh, strange thing about the Johnsons, which is Ari Aster's uh, w- other weird rape show. <laughs> Uh, half star two martyrs and half star two a lot of the Marvel stuff, Jarrett. So you know, okay, okay. they got that going for them. Okay, uh, I think this is JP. Okay, one star. Not really taken with this one, and I'm not entirely sure why. Just overall, kind of meh. Sven Nygvist certainly proves his metal, though. Yowza! He's talking about the cinematography, RJ. Oh. Looking over it now, this is one of the few, if not the only, major Bergman that he didn't write as well, so maybe that has something to do with the disconnected feeling I get. Plus, I find the whole pagan versus Christian edition to be rather obvious and unnecessary. Get out. Get out, bud. Um, <laughs> this person has over 2,000 five-star films. Okay. No four-star films. No two-star films. But over a thousand half star or one star films. How many? Th- no three stars. Uh, three hundred three star films. I see. Yeah, and uh, they're so their favorite f- films include things I don't I've never heard of, Sans Soleil from nineteen eighty three, Nostalgia from nineteen eighty three, The Last Days of Disco from nineteen ninety eight, and The Quince Tree Sun from nineteen ninety two. So I think it's safe to say I would not be good friends with this person. I don't think. Too many highs, too many lows, man. Um, so on the next page, RJ, one more. Two stars from Mosa. Mm-hmm. Very slow moving, but without it, we would not have the last house on the left. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Their favorite films include, no would you guess, The Last House on the Left, uh, <laughs> 2001, Robocop, and Jaws. So, uh, strange taste here. Yeah, there's, uh, there's better exploitation movies. They also gave five stars to Funny Games. So, you know, there's that. And then they half starred um, Cannibal Holocaust for you, Jerry, uh, and Christmas Vacation. Sorry, that's a five star or one half star? star. Half star to Cannibal oh, Holocaust. Oh, come on! Half star to well, Christmas Can- Vacation. Cannibal Holocaust is so much better than Last House on the Left. Mm, yeah, I agree. As long as you can watch that animal mm. torture free version, yeah, then then I agree. Yeah, yeah that's for, that's the, the the pansy cut. That's the line I draw. <laughs> killing people, no problem. <laughs> well, simulated killing of people, simulated death for yeah, sure. Because that's the only way we can do it in this territory. Well, I mean, rightfully so. <laughs> you know what I mean, Jer? Yeah, uh, yeah, wink, wink. Wink, wink. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah, that's it. Any any final thoughts on the the rape trilogy? Um, not my favorite trilogy. No. You did it to yourself. I didn't even tell you to watch these I, things and you did it. I know, I, mean, I know. Come on, bud. It's just I. It's you. You know, if I didn't do it now, I never would have. Which I mean, having nah, done it, I you probably might, could you, have just. You, you, yeah, exactly. Could have just never watched them. But uh, this this is how you spend your free time watching things you know you're going to hate that you didn't even need to. You're only contractually obligated to one. I know, but I actually have time now that I can. not Usually, I don't have time to watch more movies, so I was like, I'll do it when I while I can. Uh... Well, it's kids. Kids these days. It's done. After the break, yes. Um, we're going to have a, I don't know, an Odin baby. Uh, A what? We'll call him Odin son. And 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 then and he'll hold Majorner. Majorner? Is that a kind of pasta? You know, you know about that Thor. I know about Majorners. Yeah. I know about con- Conjorners. Yeah, you know about uh, Jane Foster? Uh, yeah, she lived with the gorillas in the mist, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know all about her. Yeah. Great. 
Beautiful. It's Jane Fossey, I think. Fossey? I think so. Just, just so you know.